All right, we're gonna do a 20 round mag dump at 200 yards with 556. So the idea here is that once I start shooting, I wanna shoot as fast as I can uh, while still holding onto my aiming point, right? Keeping my chevron on the bullseye. Uh, and then we'll look at the timing, right? We'll, we'll see the, the time elapsed in the video to see how fast I can do it. And we'll also go down range and look at the accuracy. Now the ammunition that I'm using is uh, Wolf WM193. Uh, it has gotten one MOA, four out of five shots, uh, many times, okay? So it's pretty accurate ammo. And I'm gonna be in eight magnification. That's the max on this primary arms PLX scope. Um, the, I should be able to uh, stay, you know, be in that eight magnification and, and stay on the, you know, keep my, uh, my chevron on the bullseye through all 20 shots, uh, firing as fast as I can. Uh, so a couple of interesting things there. Um, first of all, I, while I was shooting, I could actually see the smoke coming out of the rifle. Yeah, so the barrel heated up pretty good. Like, like I can't, I, I can't really hold on to the barrel. I mean, hand rail, nothing's transferred to the rail yet. Uh, but it was interesting. Like as I was shooting, right, both eyes open, I could see smoke coming out of this area. Uh, the other thing that was interesting, because normally when I shoot for accuracy, right, I do five shot groups. And I really take my time between the shots. And uh, what was happening here is that uh, because I was trying to shoot as fast as possible, the way the, the gun is resting on this bag, like the gun would go bang. Like I could see the my, my reticle like basically bouncing, right? So, I would, so it would go bang, it would bounce once or twice. I'd have to wait for that bounce to stop before I could take my next shot. So it was boom, bounce, boom, bounce, boom. So I had to wait for that bounce um i'm wondering if like instead of taking a sniper hold if i had held the gun down over here right that's an interesting idea that i've never tried i wonder if i could actually shoot faster by securing the gun from the front and and just having downward pressure and keeping the reticle from bouncing up and down so so that would be now that the disadvantage of that because back here i can basically squeeze the bag so every time the gun recalls right and it moves a little bit I, you know i can because i got basically two fingers on the stock two fingers on the bag and I'm, I'm able to adjust the elevation back here so um that might be the problem with holding it up here like i i, I would be able to keep the bounce down right i would stop it stop it from being able to bounce but I'm not going to be able to control the, um, you know, because from up there, I'm not going to be able to move it as much as I can move it from back here. So uh, that's an interesting concept. Yeah, so yeah, holding it down over here would, would stop that bounce, but I wouldn't be able to, 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 to keep the reticle on target as well as I can control it from back here. So, so that was an interesting experiment. So the gun is the Palmetto. Uh, Palmetto AR-15. It's got the primary arms, uh, one to eight PLX scope. Um, while I was shooting, I did briefly consider maybe I should have dialed, maybe I should dial back down to six uh, for that, you know, to give me a wider field of view. But the recall wasn't such that it was like throwing me out of scope. Like I could see the reticle, I could see the target at all times. Uh, it's just that there was a little bit of bounce that the bounce needed to settle down. Uh, so I don't think that that would be fixed by going from 8 magnification to 6 magnification. Let's go look at the target. 
An interesting point. I did this with the AR-10 308 yesterday. And I don't, I don't, I did something similar, not exactly the same, and I don't recall the bouncing. The reticle wasn't bouncing. I wonder if it's just because it's a heavier gun. All right, we're coming up on the target over there. So this is 200 yards. And the reason why I wanted to do it at 200 yards is because, uh, you know, versus 100, it tends to exaggerate the differences. So we fired 20 shots. Uh, let's see if I can count them. This can be a pain in the ass to let's see what you got to kind of follow the pattern. So let's see, we'll go up this way, around that way, here, there, there, and there. That's how I will count this. Um, so we got, let's see, we got one here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 up there. So 20 is off the point, one's off the paper. Uh, so let's take a look at the total group. So again, this is one MOA ammunition, uh, four out of five shots. I mean, it's not like match grade ammo. I mean, it's good target ammunition where I can get like four out of five shots, one MOA, if I do it like often enough. So, total group is about eight inches. Um, usually I try and discount one or two, but I don't think that would make a difference here. So we got an eight inch group. I think we did better yesterday with the 308. We got six inches, but I was, uh, I, I, maybe I wasn't shooting as fast. Um, so we got, yeah, we got eight inches at 200 yards. Um, shooting as fast as I can and keep the reticle on the, I mean, keep my, my chevron, my aiming point over here. So a couple of times when you show me, saw me slow down, it's because like I had to, I had bounced off and I had to move back. Most of the times it was going up and down, but a couple of times it went off to the side a little bit and I had to, I had to bring it back. Um, now, I, I, as I was walking down here, I was thinking of what would make this better. Uh, because I had a bag. It was bagged front and back, which is what I had yesterday when I was shooting the uh, the 308, um, the AR-10. Um, so if I had a bipod and the bipod's on the table, it wouldn't make a difference, right? Because because on the table, the, it's going to bounce the, pretty much the same way. But if I have a bipod and I sort of like dig the bipod, if I'm in a prone position... And I dig it into the ground a little bit and like push forward on it, right? They call it loading up on the bipod. Uh, that that would probably keep the uh, that would probably minimize the chevron jumping off target. So that would that would be a, de a probably the best way uh, to minimize this uh, you know this, the chevron jumping around with every shot. Most of the shots it was like boom. It was like it was going straight up and down because because I wasn't pulling left or right. You can see most of the shots are centered. It was like maybe three shots that, you know, one or two shots that off to the side. But most of the shots were like boom, psh, boom, psh. but but it was it was like it was go boom, 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 you know, and then it would settle. Boom, and then it would settle. Boom, and then it would settle. Boom, and then it would settle. That's what it looked like, right? So I need a, I, a, a good way. So basically I need to minimize the up and down. And the best way I can think to do that is to bipod, but you'd have to, I'd have to be shooting prone on the type of ground where I can like almost like like put some forward pressure and kind of lock it into place so it, it doesn't do this up and down motion. So that was an interesting experiment. I've never done this before with a 5.56. Five, um, I mean, eight inches at uh, uh, at uh, 200 yards, that's four M away. You know, at this for this rate of fire, I, I, I think that's pretty decent. You know, I mean, there's basically a head here, right? There's an eight by 11 paper. So these would all be, these, these would pretty much all be head shots. Right, you know, maybe a, an ear all the way out here. <laughs> all right, but yeah, these are these are all headshots at 200 yards at that rate of fire that you guys saw. Hey, when I was doing a little thinking on the shooting, and uh, yeah, um, by the way, there's the ammo I was using. Um, I definitely recall there was like at least twice, I guess three times, where I pulled the trigger prematurely, like the the reticle had actually jumped over to this side. Or when I went to pull the trigger, it, it kind of shifted. So these three shots over here are, are definitely me. Okay, 
uh, because I have it. I like I can I distinctly remember that happened. I remember when it happened while I was shooting. Um, so uh, putting those. And again, that was mostly because of that jumping I kept telling you of, because of the way the, the gun was jumping on the bag every time I would, I would fire and it would go up and down a little bit. But these three aside, uh, if we were to look at a cluster here, we, we got a nice six inch cluster at 200 yards at that rate of fire. All right. So that's what I, you know, that's, that's where, that's where like, uh, the majority of shots landed in the six inch cluster there's like just three out here that, that and that's because of me and and my bad timing when i pulled the trigger